Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I know some people are still trying to come on, so we will let them get here as they come on. There's some Zoom updates uh, rolling, so there's a, some delay here. But uh, welcome to all of you who made it. Uh, let's put the ladies up on spotlight here and uh, get to our announcements. We've got uh, lots of things to fill you in on, so we're going to try to make it very um, right to the important stuff um and let me find um i'm looking for renee there she is hi ladies all right let's first go to melinda melinda tell us about the tough mutter what does everybody need to know there's a lot of people registered which is super exciting super there's still exciting. a little bit of time to get in so tell them what they need to know so september 24th is tough mutter okay. you can still sign up let me check this you can still sign up to join and join our team. You just won't be able to get a custom jersey because that deadline has passed. So you can still register. You can still be on our team. If you don't want to do the mutter, you can be a spectator. It's $15. You can register for that. And there's spectator shirts as well. If you look online, I think they're $15 or no, I think those are $40. Uh, message Kristen that deadline is tomorrow. So if you're gonna be a supporter on the sideline, you wanna get one of those. Um, text MUD to 253-245-5223. I'll put that in the comments. That will get you all the info you need to know whether spectator or participating. And we're also planning a um, little get together the weekend before that is the 17th of that evening, just to kind of get to know everybody that we may not have met personally. Um, Tim, who started all this, many of you don't even know. So we just wanted to all meet each other and the week before. So I think that's it. Join us, whether in the mud or on the sidelines. It's going to be a ton of fun, you guys. And let me tell you a little secret. Now, if you have not registered... <laughs> I know that the technical deadline has passed for the jersey. However, <laughs> you do still have a little eensy weensy bit of time to sneak in there because we haven't placed the order. We had to give ourselves lots of time. There's tons of, speaking of uh, jerseys, and, and, and let me tell you about the gear. There's a lot of you who have placed a, a pre-order for gear in the last few months since the run for recovery. And there's several delays. We're having production issues. Um, there's there's just issues, you know, COVID kind of started all that and it's still going on. And so we're having some difficulties with that. And so we had to give ourselves lots of time on those jersey uh, mutter or those uh, mutter jerseys, um, but you still have a small window. So if there's any of you that are considering it in the slightest and you need more information, uh -huh. you can reach out to, to me and I'll, I'll connect you with Melinda. Um, she can tell you more firsthand. I can connect you with Tim. These, these guys can, can tell you firsthand as a participant. Um, but I can tell you as a spectator, this is an incredible day. It's an all day event watching this crew like work together. It's not a competition. It's a leave nobody behind kind of a deal. It's just a ton of fun. So if you're, if you don't want to participate, which I'm not, I'm just an example. I'm not going to participate as a participant and get muddy, but I am <laughs> going to be there and cheer them on. I am not about getting muddy either. Um, if you don't mind that kind of stuff, you want to participate with Melinda. But if you do mind that, you want to just be a spectator with me. And it's going to be a really incredible day. Just trust me, we've done it, what, three times? And yeah. then um, COVID, uh, you know, we had a break. Uh, but it is so incredible. You will like cry the whole day because you're so inspired. And it's just amazing watching our team and, uh, you know, uh, sons push their moms up over the thing. And I mean, it's just so cool, you guys. Um, so if you have any bit of interest whatsoever to be a participant, there is still time to get that jersey um, deal. And then there's plenty of time for the spectator. But join us. Let, let me know if you have any more questions after um, afterwards. You can reach out. Okay, but thanks, Melinda. Okay, Thank Becky, what do you got? Do you want me to talk about the auction? Yes, I do. <laughs> so there's two most important things to focus on tonight, and that's tickets. Most important things. Tickets? Yes. And donations. And donations. We'll let, we'll let yeah. Renee pop in too, but 
Yeah. Yeah, definitely tickets and donations. We definitely need donations for the auction, both for the silent auction and the live auction where I could let y'all talk to the man in the recliner <laughs> about the live auction. Um, but anyway, um, on sale now, um, we just we just started a, a volunteer page. So if you would like to volunteer for the event, you can go to the auction page and click on the volunteer button and let us know what you would like to help with. We've got all kinds of things we need help with. Um, so would you like to hear from Bill about the live auction? Yes, okay. yes, Bill. Okay, oh, God. guy in the recliner right over here. <laughs> trapped under a cat. He's trapped under a fat cat. <laughs> so yeah, we, we are uh, anxious to hear from people about live auction items. So, um, Anyone you know that would have a timeshare, uh, a vacation home, anything like that that they want to donate um, for a weekend or a week would be what we're looking for. Uh, Cameron, I know I talked to you at the house that day. I, I want to get a hold of, of your dad about his timeshare because that is something that would be perfect for that. Um, we're looking for 12 items. Um, I have three, so now we need nine. <laughs> That's so, all. Nine. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really think about people in your life that might be willing to donate that kind of thing. It's it the, it's really an important part of the auction. It's a significant contributor to what whatever we raise for the auction. So, right. Um, yeah. So, uh, and if you have someone, uh, refer them to me or to you know. Since Becky's more the the social media person, she she could get in touch with me. So, but we right. this is since I this live is, with them. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> middle of August, you know, and the auction is not that far away. So we really need to start gathering these things uh, as soon as possible. So right. Anyway, and, yes. and we all need a little breather, a little fun, a little trip out of town, right? Yes. 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 All so, right. So anyway, and speaking of that, how about the, the, the Renee? Yeah, Renee. So, so what are you looking for as far as baskets, Renee? Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I haven't heard from too many people. I got a couple of people talking about uh, making some things, and I was talking to Kristen, and she was saying that um, it would be nice if we could have like some homemade things too, something unique that you can't just buy off of Amazon. So, let's say you're a I don't know, maybe you make blankets or maybe you do jewelry or candles or soap or something like that. Anything like that, like something unique. And if you can't make the whole basket, it's okay because um, we're going to like make baskets around it or, you know, gather things and create a full basket, even if you don't have an entire basket. So um, start thinking about that. And it's going to be in the end of October. So, you know, it's like Christmas things. So maybe you make ornaments. I don't know. But um um just reach out to me i'll put my name and um, my number and my email up in the chat thing too again if you can't get a hold of me just anybody is fine and and um i appreciate if you go out and um talk to your local um you know businesses maybe they want to donate something small and contribute to our site at auction that would be wonderful same thing too like everyone's kind of sitting in the back because we all think we have a lot of time but we need to get on it because we have to um assemble these um in september so that's like a month away so if you could reach out i really appreciate it and then about the tough mutter i'm signed up for tough mutter i was on the um gym today the um gym thing you know at the playground and i can't do a pull-up so nick you're gonna have to push my fat butt <laughs> over the top <laughs> okay <laughs> so if i'm gonna do it somebody else you can do it too <laughs> yes yes yeah. oh, for awesome. sure for Love sure it. You'll be happy to hear the Ko Maddox's um, gave me two baskets to pass on to you. Oh, sweet, yesterday. thank you. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, Debbie and I are going to hit um, down at the waterfront and Sixth Avenue. Sweet. So, be looking for some stuff from us too. 
Okay. Yeah, they're going to start rolling in. And, you know, next week, Wednesday the 17th, we're having our next auction uh, meeting. So those of you who are part of the auction team um, or anybody that wants to be, um, join us in Kent at four o'clock. I understand that some people can't make it uh, because of their jobs, and that's okay. We'll fill you in. We're still going to appoint jobs for you. But if you can make it, uh, join us on the 17th. We're going to have the procurement forms, the actual paper copies with the, um, the carbon copies. We're going to have our posters uh, to give all of you to go out and canvas your local towns um, and then postcards to hand out and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to have all those materials next week. And so um, the way we roll around here is they all start rolling in at the, at the end of August, beginning of September. So we are really on track. It's, it's okay. Don't be too concerned. Um, this is kind of how it goes. But uh, with that being said, I do want to stress the importance of next week, next Wednesday will be a very focused auction team meeting, and we will leave that meeting in action because there is, you know, we got to put a little speed in our step and we will. So, um, so that's coming. If y'all have any questions, um, let me know, but thank you so much for getting out there. Um, asking your local businesses. Uh, I'm going to canvas Enumclaw and just ask every local business. If, it, if all these local businesses just were to give a gift, a gift card, you know, $25 to a hundred dollar gift cards, and then creating a Enumclaw, the city of Enumclaw basket or the city of Tacoma basket and putting it all together. We'll, we'll do all that later, but even just getting a $25 gift card from a business that's going to contribute to it. So everybody can do a little bit and it's going to make a big difference. So thanks everybody. But important that you buy your tickets too. We will be selling out of tickets. This is at a new location. So I want to draw attention to that. It's a new location, less seats than what we're used to, uh, more, a more exclusive event, but you will want to get your seats. So tickets, donations. All right. With that, I think, and join us moms, all you ladies, join us tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. We're going to talk a little bit more about this, the organization of all this, um, the auction, and then our upcoming event, like our monthly partner barbecues coming up on August 21st. Um, all of you monthly partners should have gotten that information. All of you real rebuild families, everybody, all you supporters are totally, we want you all there. So, um, so if you, you didn't get the information, let us know. Um, and, uh, that's it for now. <laughs> Let's go on over to uh, to the crew. Let's remove all these spotlights, get you all muted again, and find our crew over here at Rebuild. They're back. Hi, guys. <laughs> so those of you who are new out there, this is Mr. Kyle Munkers. He's a manager over there at Rebuild Recovery, but he also is our comedian. He brings us a little humor uh, to start us off. So take it away, Kyle. Okay. I'll wait. <laughs> okay, well, for the first joke, I need some help from Art. So it, it's a knock knock joke, but in this one, Nico, Nico. Oh, okay. It's a knock knock joke, but you have to start it. Okay. That's, that's the joke. So go ahead. I didn't say knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just laugh at it. <laughs> oh, okay, good. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. What's going on? Okay. Did you guys hear about that big circus fire? It was intense. I don't know. No, I can see you. All right. Nico's fucking up my moment. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. One thing I can't stand is judgmental people, but I'm very good at spotting them just by looking, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're judgmental. <laughs> you know the difference between a toaster and a phone? No? It probably burns when you answer your phone. <laughs> okay. 
Moving on. Why don't, why didn't they ever make a pregnant Barbie? Because Ken came in another box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you get a man with one arm out of a tree? Just wave. This furniture, this furniture store keeps calling me. It's super annoying. I mean, all I wanted was one night stand. <laughs> Diarrhea is hereditary. It runs in your genes. <laughs> What's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke timing? <laughs> you know, people who tell me they do yoga every day, you know, Renee, you know, um, I have a hard time believing that. It's kind of a stretch. <laughs> 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 what did the elephant say to the naked man? He said, and, and you're able to breathe through that thing? <laughs> you know, I don't. <laughs> Lindsay Godinez, everybody. N Nico. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't think I could stand being in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Last one. You know, you actually, you know, you have to hand it. You have to hand it to blind prostitutes. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, Art. So I have to I have to mention there's people on here we haven't seen in a while. Um, we're, uh, Judith is on here. So excited that she's got internet or that laptop. She hasn't been able to tune in for so long. And I know she's really missed it. So I'm so glad that got worked out. It's great to see you, Judith. Kathy Washington. Hey, it's been so long. We have Sandy Thompson on tonight. We've got, we've got all kinds of people who haven't been on in a while. So it's so good to see you all. We look forward to, uh, to uh, opening up and, and chatting a little bit and hearing how you guys are all doing. So, And we've got some new people in the house tonight, too. So welcome, all of you. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Art. Are we ready? Yep. All right. How's the sound? I think we're good. So uh, last night we had a discussion here and we gave kind of a useful um a useful means of of a way to get to a compassionate place inside and kind of a working definition for the elimination of hatred um and it was very simple it wasn't a big thing we're not here um hugging each other compassionately or anything like that so don't get it don't get that kind of thing in your mind. It was more of just, there was some hatred and anger towards a particular person and we need to work that out and um, not have that going on with ourselves. So it was a simple definition of how do I, when I don't feel compassion for a person, I have a entryway to just go ahead and look at why I'm the same as them and begin to stop looking at the differences or stop looking at the differences between me and that person and start looking at the similarities. And um, if you do that, and kind of the thing that I mentioned was how, you know, men getting hit in the balls um, get laughed at by women. Well, we as men um, cringe every time it happens because we know the pain and we, we're the same. Um, and so compassion, a working definition, really quick one, not to get too flamboyant with it or not to get too um, Buddha with it. Just simply say um, we're the same. And we look for these kind of ways that um, we're the same as the person. I remember I used to uh, go to McDonald's and um, when I was a kid and I would sit down and get two cheeseburgers, a six piece McNugget, a large Coke and a large fry. And that was my that was my meal from the time I was in ninth grade to whenever I like that kind of that meal right there. And I remember I used to look at larger people that came walking into McDonald's and wonder, what are they doing here? 
<laughs> like, really, why is this big fat person eating McDonald's, you know? And, and I would have a lot of anger towards them. Like they should be taking care of themselves while well, simultaneously me stuffing this cheeseburger down my throat. And well, as it's gone on and now my weight becomes a problem, um, I get it. So when I'm at McDonald's mm -hmm. kind of shame in shame sitting there eating my McDonald's and that person now walks in, I go, oh, we're the same. I get it. And so then I can now have compassion for that person. So that was simply a working definition of that. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about something a little different. And um, I think that uh, I think that it's important that we don't get to the bottom of why we use drugs, but we kind of get a philosophy of maybe the possibilities of what was interesting about it. And um, I don't think we're going to get to the heart of the matter of why I grabbed that more so than just saying, well, that felt better than this. But as a blanket thing, when I did drugs, it felt better than this. And, um, but really what became for me was, and I don't know if this was this way for you, but with drug use, there was something that became kind of like a way of me getting what's inside me out to the world. You know, I had my own particular way of using, I had my own particular drug of choice. I had my own particular mixture. I had my own particular way. I like to do it. There was things I like to do, you know, maybe for me, it was a way that, you know, I could go to a bar and. If I went to a bar and I didn't have any drugs, it was very difficult for me to talk to women. I just couldn't go up to them and do that. But when I had a little bit of drugs on board and at that right mixture, boy, I was suave. I could just, you know, go and had game against with the women and all that kind of thing. And so um, I, I believe that drug use was a way to get what's inside me out to the world. And so tonight, what I'm going to talk about is not not. Um, why we're the same. And I think part of us being the same is a problem. I think that what we need to be talking about, and we talk about wanting to matter um, as a person, when I get in early recovery, or when I get sober, I don't feel like I matter. I don't feel like I matter in any way. When I got sober, I didn't feel like I mattered to the world. It didn't matter if I, there was no friends calling me. I wasn't the life of the party. I wasn't the dude showing up at Friday night. Everybody was waiting for. I didn't go to the company and have everybody want my ideas. I was always out of the room when they were talking about what the company was going to do. I just didn't matter. I didn't matter really much with my family. I didn't matter much anywhere. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to matter. Well, what I came up with was that what I wanted truly to matter was I wanted my ideas and my thoughts out in play. I wanted those ideas and I wanted those thoughts out in the world. Um, somebody said earlier, um, I asked for topics and Lindsay told me that fight. Why aren't people fighting harder or kind of a topic like that? But I think my question is, why aren't you wanting your thoughts and ideas out in the world? And why aren't you pushing those forward? And, why aren't, and, and when you start feeling that, you know, kind of creating the life, looking down at your life and going, does it look like I want it to look? And then seeing, oh, it doesn't look like I want it to look. You know, people think complaining and resentment and, and blame are going to be the things that change the landscape of their life. They're not. They're the things that are blocking you from changing the landscape of your life. So we have a real simple thing here, you know, and and we're doing this tagline. And Angie today was talking to me about the tagline for rebuild and saying, and it was always been not your typical recovery program. And, um, you know, I want that to be true. So Becky will be on here and Becky knows that every so often she has to come to me and she says, she asked me a couple of questions. She says, how do you help families? That's one question that people always want the answer to. They want me to write it down, how we help families and how we help addicts. They want me to write that down. Then people along the way have also asked me to write a book. How come you haven't written a book and put everything out there to the world? The answer to those two questions is no and no. Because the way we help families, the way that your family is being helped, the way that you guys are being helped, helped in this room is our form of self-expression together. In each of this exchange, it's different. This program is throwing everything up against the wall and you grab what fucking sticks and you pick it up and you use what you want to use. And then you express yourself back out into the world through this. There is nothing here. There's not a person in this room can tell you what I told you to believe in, what I'm telling you to do. I don't tell you, well, maybe if you can get one thing, I'll tell you, do I say, hey, get up and make your bed and don't sleep till noon. 
but that's about it. Other than that, do what you want. There was a, so I looked up the word typical today. Go ahead. It's up there. It's just a small view. I can't read it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you went for it. It says a characteristic of a, per, a particular person or thing. No, nope, you got the wrong one. Let me get this one. Okay. Sorry, I did it wrong. The definition I saw said showing the characteristics expected of a, or popular associated with a particular person, situation, or thing. Do you want your recovery to be typical? Can you read it again? It says, showing the characteristics expected of or popularly popular associated, associated with a particular person, situation, or thing. I do not want my recovery to be typical. I have never wanted it to be typical. I don't want other people's recovery to be typical. Just your, like your drug use wasn't typical. I hope it wasn't typical. I hope you got something to tell me about how you self-expressed in your drug use. I hope you got one thing you can tell me that makes you different. I hope you did something. Grab the pistol, rob the old lady in the church. That's that's not typical. What did you do that's not typical? So now we're doing all this kind of stuff in our drug use that wasn't typical, that we're self-expressing, that we're doing all this stuff. And now you think you're going to come into recovery and be typical? <laughs> and people are asking us to be typical. People are saying that typically what people do that stay sober is they do this and this. I don't give a shit what pe people typically do. Typically, people don't go to the bar in early recovery. I did because that's where the women was. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's where I had to go. There was no women anywhere else. They were at the bar. Could I drink and go? to? No, I couldn't. So I had to go and drink coffee at the bar. Is that typical? I don't know, but it was a way for me to get what I wanted to do out in the world. And so sitting here looking at not a typical recovery program, that's absolutely right. I'm going to throw everything up against that wall. You grab it. The way self-expression works is this. Get rid of the fucking blame. Get rid of the resentments. Get rid of your goddamn complaints. You get all that shit out of your head. And then you have clean soil. You have a head full of clean soil. It's sitting there ready for something new. But you better get the blame out. You better get the complaints out. You better get the shit that you actually think is going to change your life. Because it ain't. Get that out of the way. Look now down at the landscape of your life. Match it here, get this clean soil, and then information comes in. Now, whatever information you're going to grab out of this program or that program or AA or wherever you grab it, and it plants seeds in that soil. And you design your landscape based upon all that with a hint. And the water is you. The seeds is the information. The cleaning of the soil is the work. The water is you, your thoughts. So you get to a place where you can make your life and the family's on here. It's not typical. So I cannot explain to you the 12 rules for life because there is not 12 rules for life. That is seriously retarded. There is not four agreements that make my life complete. If I just follow these four things, there's massive amount of shit for me to self-express. There is not 12 steps. I'm sorry. There's a million steps. There's every different direction, infinite number of steps to take, infinite number of rules, infinite number of not rules, infinite number of agreements. I can't write you a book. I can't give you a recipe. I can't be typical. I can do nothing but just throw information against the wall and say, grab some of that shit. Grab some of that shit, plant it right here. Put your own fucking thoughts off it. Get rid of that hatred and shit. Get rid of the bullshit complaining, the whining, the calling your fucking mommy, all that bullshit, and plant some and water some shit. Water these seeds that you're being given. And then express yourself in recovery just like you did in your drug use. Do something. You want a yard? You know what people are doing in their yard? You ever go buy a nice yard? What that man's doing is he's putting what inside his heart, he's putting out in the world. He's saying, look at the yard. Look at my yard. Look at this. Look at my yard. It's different than that. I added my thoughts to this. Phil Helmuth was at the World Series of Poker. He was at the main event. We're all sitting there at the main event. It's day two of the main event. We're sitting there. The whole room is packed. It's pretty quiet. And all of a sudden, Phil Helmuth comes walking in. If anybody knows who Phil Helmuth is, he's one of the most famous poker players in the world. He comes walking in, and I believe it was a full-on Batman suit. <laughs> 
the crowd stopped. And he's walking. He's got security. He's got the cameras. He's making this grand entrance an hour late to start the day. And he sits down. And everyone at the table starts whining. Everyone at the table starts saying, oh, God, look at him. Look at what a piece of shit he is. Who does he think he is? He's self-expressing and people don't like it. You know, people don't like you to self-express. They don't. They like you to be typical. When I was in early recovery and I said, I, I told parents and families, they go, you gamble? Yes, I gamble every day. Every day. I bet on football. I bet on basketball. I bet on baseball and I play poker. I love it. Am I addicted? I don't know. Does it, tr- does it ruin my life? I don't know. Is that typical? I don't give a shit. But people wanted me to lie about it. People wanted me to say, don't, don't tell people that you do that. They'll think you have an addiction. Well, guess what? My life gets better and better every day, and it has for 11 years. And I don't owe a human being on this planet any money. So you tell me if I'm okay to gamble. Does people tell Phil Helmuth he's got a gambling addiction? People go down to the poker World Series of Poker and tell all the guys, hey, you guys all got addictions? Well, why are you telling me I do? Just because I used to do crack cocaine? Because I used to sh- shoot heroin? Now you're telling me some bullshit? Typical? I want to be anything but typical. I want to be original. I want to get my thoughts out in the world and leave some type of mark here. I don't know if you guys want to do that, but I do. I don't want to leave this world and say I did what everybody told me to do. By the way, when you're at the World Series of Poker and you're walking through the hallways, we're cattle. It's literally like cattle. It's time to play at 11. The halls are packed. It's like, moo, moo. <laughs> and we're all walking down these hallways to try to get to our table. And they're telling us when to sit down. They're telling us when to take a break, when to go to the bathroom, when to eat. Mm-hmm. And Phil Helm, you said, forget that. I'll come when I want. I'll show up wearing what I want. I'll say what I want. And everyone gets mad at him and resentful. We've got this beautiful bus across the street. And I, for, for days, I found myself, like, angry that it was there. It's this beautiful bus motorhome that's painted like a mural. And for days, I found myself thinking, he's going to ruin my neighborhood. <laughs> what kind of shit is this? What's this going to make me look like it's living across from this thing? And today, when I did this and I started having these thoughts, I looked out there and went, wait, that thing's beautiful. That belongs there. That's not typical. See, we like things to be typical because we're, it's the opposite of, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing about us not having compassion because everything that's different than, we, than, than typical, we're scared of. Everything that's dip- different than typical, we put down. Our immediate reaction is to put everything that's different than typical down. If I say I don't believe in any kind of medication for mental health, people go, oh, God, how can he say that? I don't believe in therapy at all. How's that? Oh, how can he say that? I, I, what do you want me to say? I'm telling you what's in here and I'm telling you out here. I was telling you what I've seen. I'm telling you my experience. I'm telling you how I think. I'm not telling you how to think. I'm not. I'm not telling you how to do your recovery. Yeah, I might tell you when to wake up because guess what? You need to be up if you want to have any sort of start on the day. You got to go to bed so you're not dragging ass and you probably shouldn't. You're not self-expressing if you're sleeping and you're not self-expressing if you're playing video games all day and you're not self-expressing if you're the person watching the TikTok rather than making it. Those people are self-expressing and you're like a sheep going, look what I'm watching. 4.0 million people watch this. We'll make one. How's that? Do something. Typical? Not your typical recovery program. Okay, good. Why? Because this is about you self-expressing. And if you don't do it, you're not going to matter. If you don't get what you want, you know, cook a meal for everyone. That's self-expression. Buy a car, paint it purple. That's self-expression. Whatever you do. So I looked up that typical, and I thought, God, that is a disgusting way to be typical. But guess what? For years and years and years, recovery's been pretty typical. You've been told in recovery, huh? Yeah. You've been told in recovery that people that recover, they do what? 
They get a sponsor. They work the steps. They do a meeting every day. We know what typical is. If you don't do that, you're going to die. Not only if you don't work 12 steps, are you going to not make it? You're going to die. That's insane. And you're told you have to say you're an addict all the time forever, even if you haven't done any drugs. Hey, if you drive truck for five years, for the rest of your life, you got to tell everyone you're a truck driver. <laughs> rest of your life. Anybody asks you who you are, you got to say truck driver. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm a truck driver. It's fucking insane brainwashed who cares maybe you need it maybe i was maybe we are who gives a shit thoughts are coming into your brain you're washed if you don't add yours if the seeds come into your brain and you repeat what everyone is telling you to repeat that's nothing but if the seeds are coming into your brain and you put your special thoughts on it you you water that shit your way and then you come out with something original Everything that's original was spawned from something that somebody else said, just carried down, but it's original because you add your water to it. You have your clean soil here and you're able to think about the future and you're able to think about how to create for people. You're able to think about how to get what's inside here, whatever thoughts, whatever ideas you have out in the world. Nobody wants to be a robot. For years, they've been telling me if I read poker books, that I'll rapidly get better quicker. I've kind of read some books. I've done that, but I don't care because poker is a self-expression of my game. I don't want to repeat how he told me to do it. I don't care. I don't want to invest how the guy told me to invest. And if you invest in this exact way, you will be a millionaire. I don't even find any joy in that. I want to do it how I want to do it. And if it works, then it's a form of what I created. And if it doesn't, then I created something that didn't work. But at least I created it. Le at least I left some of me out there. So to get to the point where you can self-express, to get to the point where you can matter, you have to eliminate blame. You have to eliminate resentments. You have to clear up old relationships. You have to apologize. You have to get that shit out of the soil because you got no soil. All you got is this dirty, weedy, sticky shit. Nothing grows in it. And so you got to do it. typical. How do I help a family? I got 50 families on here right now that we've helped. Can you quantify that? No, I can't quantify that. No. Anybody that tells you they can quantify how we help families is a lunatic. I can write some bullshit up and maybe you'll accept it. But what's the measuring stick for help? I don't know what they did or what I did. We came together in this beautiful exchange of self-expression. And I can't write it down what happened. But you know what happened and you can explain to somebody what happened to you. But I don't know what happened to you and you don't know what happened. <laughs> So we can't even write it down. We can't do anything. And so you can say, how was I helped by Battlefield? There's a hundred different answers. Some of your kids are smoking weed and drinking they're never, and, and they're doing just fine. Came in with a heroin addiction and they went back to just going out and drinking and smoking weed. And these families are happy. Can I write that down? You cannot quantify help. No way. I cannot write a book today and think I'm going to think the same way in 10 years from now. I'm going to be embarrassed by my book because I don't think the same way anymore. I don't express the same way anymore. Life happens. And we're going to take this 12-step book from 100 years ago and just use it and apply it to our shit right now? I don't know about that, man. Maybe you want to express yourself through that. I don't know. Maybe there's, and I'm not saying there's not great material in there. Who's, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I feel the rebellion. I, I mean, feel like different editions, you know, they keep on changing and changing. You feel no, you think the content's pretty much the same. It, it is. It is. We are, dude. But I'm just saying, I'm not even saying it's bad or good. I'm saying, is it typical? Do you want typical? If it's typical and you want typical, then think how you want to think. Maybe you're like, I love typical. Maybe you say, I want a typical job, a typical family. There was a lot of people that express themselves. Some guys go to work for 40 years, and the only reason they go to work is to put food on the table for their kids, and they don't care about their thoughts and ideas getting out in the world. 
They care about raising a good kid. Is that self-expression? Yes. Because he's not blaming, he's not complaining, not doing anything. He's putting food on his table and you ask him what his life's about. He says, it's about my kid. You put food on the table and it's about their life. Is that self-expression? Absolutely. I put what's in here and give my heart to this. <clears throat> so even typical doesn't have to be, you don't have to, none of it matters. It matters that you don't have that shitty soil in your head. It matters that when you want, if you want hatred out of your heart, you got to look at why you're the same. Now, if you get all that hatred out of your heart, now you're going to start looking at why you're different in a positive way. And you start going to create your own uniqueness. You should be unique. You should create that. You should figure out why you're different. You should have your own recovery program. You should do it like nobody else has ever done it. You should do it like you do it. You can't just go explain what we do. I can't tell you how I stay sober. None of you can stay sober. Like, can I tell you guys to say, here, well, here's what I did. I went to the bar. I sat and drank coffee a lot of nights. I quit going to meetings and I gamble all the time. Can you all do that? Stay sober that way. Good luck. But you're going to do it your way. And I probably couldn't do that. I can't tell you how Danny's staying sober. He's just doing it. I can't tell you how Jeff's doing it or Kyle's doing it or Lindsay's doing it. I can't tell you anyone's doing it. They're just doing it their way every day. Self-expression, mattering. Paint your house, build your deck, drive your car, wear your shoes, put that hat on the way you want to put it on. When you get out of here, make your bed. Don't make your bed. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to come over to your house 10 years now and go, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, you're not doing it right. How's your room? How's your room? <laughs> oh, you're never going to stay sober. I've seen typical sobriety get loaded all the time. So what's that mean? I don't know. It means how are you going to do it? How are you going to start to feel like you matter? How are you going to? You're, you're bottled up, man. That's why you took drugs. And I, I guarantee almost every one of you took drugs and you, did, you tried to do your favorite thing that you wanted to do. Whatever that is. Some people's favorite thing is music. Some people's favorite thing is playing in the guitar. Some people's favorite thing is artwork. Some people's favorite thing is video games. Some people, whatever it is, you got high and went, I want to do this now. I'm free to do it. All that bullshit's off my mind, so I want to draw. And then what happened is you stopped being able to do your favorite thing because you started to get addicted too deeply to the drugs. And now you can't even use drugs to get back to that place anymore. And so what you're trying to do now is find a way to get all that bullshit off your mind so you can get to a place where you can do your favorite things with your favorite people, put what you got out in the world. But it takes, it does take some type of effort. Some type of effort to say, hey, man, I owe you an apology. We need to talk out our relationship because that shit's on my mind and I can't create when I'm thinking about you. And I want to get my soil clean. So I got some work to do. Now that in the steps, there was some beauty to that. Absolutely right on. Step four, step five, step six, step seven, step eight, step nine. Boom. They had it. They had a pretty good philosophy on what would do on how a person would do that. So I've grabbed that book and I've done those steps. Does that make me typical? No, because I've done a lot of other shit. You want to add a little Christianity, a little Buddhism, a little 12 steps. You want to add it, whatever you want to add into your mix. Go ahead, throw it all in there. Go hit a Buddhist temple. Go to an Eckhart Tolle show. Go to a, a Christian conference. Go to an NA conference. Throw all that shit in there. And then mix it up all in here and make your shit. Whatever you want. Self-expression. Different than compassion. Compassion says we're the same. Self-expression says we're not the same. Here's how. I'm like this. I wear my hair like this. Okay. And I think then with that compassion, I can look at people that are self-expressing and I can, I can be happy for them rather than being angry with them and rather than saying they're bad for not doing it the way I want. 
So when I thought of all of it and I looked at, why am I angry at this bus across the street from my house? What's it have to do with me? If I really look at it and I just look at the artwork on it, it's beautiful and it belongs there and it lights up my day. But I know neighbors are driving down the street going, that's not typical. They can't park that there. Well, I got a treatment center right in the middle of your neighborhood. What, what about that? Is that typical? We're doing drug treatment in the backyard of my home where I grew up, where I robbed my father. This is the very garage where I stole his tools so I could get loaded. Is it typical that we turn that into a drug treatment center and start getting people sober? I don't think so. I hope not. It's a form of self-expression. Saying, look what happens when you get all the bullshit out of your mind and you're able to put, you're able to create a life that you want. Let's be real honest here. How many of you got the life you want right now? And if you don't, then shut the fuck up and get this, do what I'm saying. Stop with the bullshit about your complaints and mommy and daddy coming and somebody's going to come save you from this shit. They ain't. You're not getting out of here. There's nowhere to get out to. <laughs> You're not, I need to get out of this place. Then what? Then what are you going to do? This is, a, this is the same thing. Listen, you're living here. You're here. Live. If you can't live here, you can't live there. If you can't self-express here, you can't self-express there. If you don't matter here, you're not going to matter there. And there you'll be, sitting in your place, leaving here, really not mattering. Wherever you go, it's where you're at. And you're not mattering. And now you're sitting in an apartment alone because mom got you an apartment and helped you with that shit and pays that. Now you're sitting in there alone and you don't matter yet because you didn't do the work to start mattering. You didn't do the work to start clearing the soil. You don't have any creative thoughts. You've got repetitive thoughts of negative shit that's happened and the shit that you've done. And now you're in an apartment alone. Good for you. You're done. And then you get some drugs and you go, oh, now I want to create. Where's my... Where's my laptop? I'm going to make some music. Where's that video game console? I'm going to play some video games. I know you're using drugs to try to matter. I get it. It's not going to work. Eventually. Can I borrow some money? I don't matter. And now the cycle goes, I don't matter. And it's worse. And I owe more people and on and on and on. Self-expression. Mattering is what you've been looking for all along. Respect. Respect through my ideas. Respect through my thoughts. Who likes to put an idea out and have everyone say, that's stupid. That's a dumb idea. No. But see, self, self-expression is risky. It's risky because people can judge you. So when you do it without drugs, wor you should worry. You know, you might talk and nobody will listen. You might have an idea and everybody will tell you it's stupid. See, Phil Helmings was take. just think of that. This guy's getting dressed up in a Darth Vader suit or Batman suit. He's putting on tights and shit. And he's telling everyone. He knows they're going to hate on him. And he's just walking in saying, fuck all you guys. What are you doing? Sitting there being typical? Sitting there with your head down. Oh, I got my headphones on and I'm dead serious. Well, he's better than you. He's expressing himself. But we hate that. We truly hate it. We have no compassion towards it. We start telling the person, if somebody says, remember how much they hated the guy at Passengers? People still talk about this guy. The dude said something. He said, my name is Pax, and I'm not an addict anymore. And people wanted to kill him. Kill him. How can he dare say that? He was a drug addict, and now he's just not anymore. Oh, my God, really? That's insane. That's what we're all sitting here trying to do. And he's told us that he's accomplished it, and we go, Kill him. <laughs> We're sitting here trying not to be addicts anymore. And God forbid somebody tell us they've done it. That guy got ran out on a rail. Everyone wanted him out. 
people still say, oh, did you know he's dead now from an overdose? You don't know that. And he's not. <laughs> the fuck, you just heard some dipshit say that, so you fucking passed it on. <laughs> the guy owns Passages Malibu. He's got way more money than you, talent, charisma. But here you go, knocking him down because he said he's not an addict. I want him to say he's an addict every day. That makes me feel better. Because somebody told me that we have to be. I can't believe somebody told us we have to be. It's like going to a financial seminar and going, are you broke now? And you go, yes, I'm broke now. And you go, even when you make a million, I need you to tell people you're broke. You got to <laughs> say it forever. You go to the financial seminar. Hi, I'm Art. I'm broke. <laughs> you got a million in the bank? Yes, but I'm still broke, man. If I don't say this, I'll always be broke. I'll always be broke. <laughs> It's insane. I will not say it. It's ridiculous. Don't look at, you think I'm a drug addict? Do I look like one? I'm fat. (laughs) Jesus. I'll show you what I looked like back when I was doing drugs. I know what a drug addict looks like. It ain't this. (laughs) Not your typical recovery program. All right. Yeah, that means that your characteristics aren't similar to other people's that are doing what you're doing. They'll hate you for that. You'll never make it. Did you go to a meeting last night? Oh, ticking time bomb. (laughs) You're never going to make it. What'd your sponsor say? I don't have a sponsor. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh. (laughs) all the families. Well, typically about now, my son should be making amends. They all know that step. They all know, all the families know that step. They look at all the 12 steps and there's like, which is the one where I get the apology? Nine. Nine. I'm waiting for my son to do his ninth step. That's very important to me. Tell me I'm right. Yeah, that's the one where he apologizes for stealing my shit, right? Huh, he's not going to make it. He's never done that. They all know that one. More Americans in the world probably know step nine than any other step. They can't name another one, but they know that one. I yet to have a person come up and do a ninth step. I've been doing drug treatment for 11 years. (laughs) I've never had one person come up to me and go, hey, you're on my ninth step here. I know a lot of people that have been with me have done a ninth step. They still owe me money. (laughs) Stiffed me. They've never come up and said, hey, I stiffed you and left the sober house and didn't pay. You're on my night stuff. Not once. So what is it? You sitting here. One, I cannot write a book. I will not write a book. I won't do it. Because it's locking me into something so small that I can't even. I can't even self-express. I will not tell people how I help them. You'll never get it out of me. I'll never write it down. I've been helping people for 11 years. I still have not picked up a pen. (laughs) I have not looked in a file. I do not. We had, I ran a treatment center. I owned a treatment center and people, my counselors would come up to me and go, do you know how we put these files together? And I go, no. (laughs) Can you train me on how to put these files together, Art? No, I don't know what's in there. (laughs) I never knew what was in there. I never looked at one file. And then I, and then the treatment center got shut down and we had to, I had these nine years of files that I was supposed to save that have never been touched. Just nine years of paper that nobody's looked in, in nine, nine years, not one person. And then we just all in the state. Well, are you helping drug addicts? Well, where's your files? What? How do you do it? I don't know what they say. How was the group? What did you guys talk about? Can you imagine how ridiculous that is? My counselors used to have to send to the insurance companies notes on what the client said in group. So it goes like this. We asked the client about acceptance. Client talked back and said this about acceptance and then sends that to another third party so that we can get the money. Oh, they did a group. Like the insurance companies is, hey, they're down at Art's Place talking about acceptance. Send the check. <laughs> Send the check now. They were talking about acceptance. We know he helped them. 
Meanwhile, everyone's loaded, failing the UAs. <laughs> Typical? Boo. Boo. And Beck, I apologize. Beck, because Becky's got to do this work. You know, they tell the grant writers, they tell them you got to, to get a grant for a nonprofit, you got to have all this stuff. So useless. Just useless, useless information. They require hours and hours to do it. So you just got to say, no, I don't want that. Because I'm not doing it. I am not picking up a pen and I'm not writing on a piece of paper about you. I know you a little bit better than have to look in the file to find your name. Yes, thank you, Becky Wiggins, for doing it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I appreciate it. But yep. you ever go to the doctors and the doctor comes in, doesn't know your name? He's got to look on his laptop. He's looking on his laptop. Looking at the computer. How do you feel? This is great. This guy doesn't even remember my name. I just seen him a month ago. Yeah. Chad doctor kind of goes in there. Yeah. Chad. Doesn't even remember my name. He's got to look on a laptop. Then you see the doctor. He comes in like a polo shirt. What's up, man? No file in his hand. That's who I want to help me right there. Yeah. So compassion says... We're the same. Self-expression says, here's how we're different. Then I want to prove to you how we're different through my thoughts and through my ideas. And I want you to, to hopefully like them. And if you don't, you don't. Maybe somebody else will. And self-expression is risky. Because you're going to say what's in your heart and your mind. And guess what? If it's not typical, people aren't going to like it. If it's different, people won't like it. They'll be scared of it. Somebody plays some music that nobody typically listens to. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> it's pretty sad what we've done. Pretty sad how we put ourselves in these boxes. Think out of the box. You can't. What's out there? People say, we think outside the box. How? How? You're in the box. You only have the information that you have. The information that you don't have is outside the box. Try to think out there. Well, I don't know what's out there. I know. Because outside the box is what you don't know you don't know. So how do you think outside the box when you don't know you don't know it? No, you're thinking in your box. You're in there. You got the information that you know and people have told you. And that's all you got. So you're thinking in your box. But we should be trying to get out of there. I'm going to think out the box here. We're going to go to the store tomorrow rather than today. <laughs> Let's think out the box. How are we going to arrange our groceries in the kitchen? We're going to think real outside the box here. We're going to put our cookies up here and our soda down here. We're going to get way out of the box. <laughs> It. You're always doing shit that somebody else has done. Now, hopefully, we can have an original thought, though. And, and the original thoughts and the self-expression, they happen to us out of nowhere. Those ideas that get you excited. That you know nobody else has ever thought of. And it's a mixture of a clean mind and clean soil and a thought that occurs to you and you go, aha. I got an idea. And that's excitement. And, it, and we, can't even, we can't even do it. It's done to us. So when we have a clean soil and we're thinking of, we're thinking of the future, or we're thinking we just do there. This group tonight was a mixture of just cleaning my soil and then sitting there and letting the brain just sit until it went, aha, self-expression. Oh, now I can share. But I don't know how you do that. You have to take everything from out here and let it come in here. And then you got to be open enough to sit there and not have complaints or whines or, or problems or amends to make, or mommy did this to me and I'm worried about this. And you can't have any of that shit to get those ideas. Those ideas come in the shower when you're happy. Those ideas come when you're rested and you're not complaining and the good ideas come in. You complain about a problem. You complain about a problem. You're pissed off. You're whining about it. And then all of a sudden you get some rest and the brain goes, aha, and you have an answer. 
I'll fix it like this. So those creative thoughts need that soil. Okay, Ange. All right, all right, let's open it up for some conversation. Um, so questions, comments, um, the way you let me know that you've got something is you just use the raise your hand uh, feature on your device. So I'm raising my hand right now, you can see. Um, if you can't figure that out on your device, um, you can unmute yourself, you can get my attention somehow, you can chat and say you have something to say. Um, but uh, we'd love to hear from you guys and uh, questions, comments, anybody really going through it out there? Anybody no. new out there? We'd love to meet you. And those of you no, who haven't been here in a while and are new here, we'd love an update. So let's hear it. Okay, well, we're waiting. Somebody raise your hand. I'm going to, you know, typically when a drug addict gets his driver's license back for the first time in recovery, people clap. Yeah. Yay. You know, 16 year olds got their license today. <laughs> we don't need to clap for that shit. You know, somebody pays back somebody the thousand they owe them, and we all go, Hey, phone bill. Yeah. Hey, way to go, dude. It's like we all one of us gets on a bike and rides it, and everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> you still can do that. Yeah. I feel like we should clap for Dan when he gets his license. Yeah, we should clap for Danny. Maybe it's a phone. Okay, the yeah. Becky's in here. Hey, Becky and ladies. Yeah. I rec I recognize my Lynn. Oh, yeah, hi. there she is. <laughs> my Lynn, I'll never forget the name. I met, I got to meet uh, My Lynn last week at the National Night Out. She's friends with Debbie and and uh, and I think Becky now or was you already right around the corner from me. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> but I love the name, My Lynn. Oh. It's just so sweet. Like My Lynn, <laughs> love it. My <laughs> Becky. Like your Lynn. Yeah. Like my, my, my Deb. Like my, yeah. Yeah. Like my, my Deb. My Becky, my Lynn. I love it. Anyways, <laughs> hi, ladies. Hello. Hi. Hey. Do you want to say anything? No. No? Okay. <laughs> no. We're done. We're going to talk. We're gonna oh. talk. So, oh. my Lynn, I'm, I'm, hey, uh, we got to book your consultation. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we want to get to know you and, and kind of get a starting point of how we can help. So, I mean, yeah, I know you're going through it with your daughter. Correct. So uh, let's uh, let's schedule a consultation. We'll okay. get you we'll get you over in Kent uh, to meet you. Sit down, just uh, one on one with you. And okay, does that sound good? Great, I'm ready. Right. Right. <laughs> I want to bring her on uh, group counseling too. Is that okay? Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, yes. Ah, Debbie, coaching, coaching, coaching. Yes. coaching. <laughs> well, <laughs> get it straight. Get it right, Deb. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of that, okay. thanks for bringing that up, Deb, because um, heads up, everybody, uh, our next group coaching session is next week, uh, next Wednesday, the 17th. Group coaching is something we do once or twice a month. Um, it's 6 to 8.30. Uh, it's one of uh, many of us will vouch and say it's our favorite thing that we do. You know, the, the really great thing about group coaching, everybody's nodding their heads. Um, the really great thing about group coaching is it's uh, everybody gets to talk you know, and share. And like in this, everybody could tonight, but not everybody does. Uh, it's an intimate environment and we all just, it's just great. It's just great. So join People us. People don't worry about me embarrassing them. <laughs> yeah. And well, and, and it's the kind of environment and space that you have time to think about your thoughts. I think every weekend solution group, you think afterwards, oh, I should have asked this. I should have shared this. You don't think it quick enough, but in that environment. And the really cool thing too about group coaching is just that when you see another person getting coached, you learn more from observing somebody else in the moment. Because oh, yeah. uh, when it's you being coached in the moment, sometimes you can't, kind of can't quite see it yet. And it takes a little time to process later. I mean, so it's just such a it's so powerful. So the way you um, register is you can just go to our website, battlefieldaddiction.com. You click on services and then click on group coaching. And you can always find out when our next date is on our website and you can always register. If there's no cost to group coaching, but you do need to register um, yeah. because we do limit the number and all that. So um, just to kind of keep it to where we can you know, hear from everybody and everybody has an opportunity to kind of share what they're going through and, and what, what they're needing right then. So so get registered. Look forward to seeing all three of you ladies there. We'll be there. We'll be there. Awesome. All right.
Who's next out there? I can feel there's more that wanted to say something. Come on, bring it. <laughs> Judith, mm -hmm. it's so good to see you. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy Washington, we'd love to hear from you guys. The Strobels from Colorado are in the house tonight for the first time. Welcome, guys. We'd love to meet you. If you're willing, you can unmute yourself. Sometimes first timers like to just, you know, be quiet and that's that's okay but we invite you you're in good hands here so we invite you to say hi and Logan. Hey, great we got let's, david uh, pam and Logan. hey dave and pam let's get you unmuted well it's it's just me because dave uh he's in the recliner he got kind of tired after we had the rebuild crew out <laughs> here for two different days to get rid of all of our I'm All of our stuff has <laughs> been gone a long time ago. So I just want to thank them for doing such a fantastic job. And we may have them out one more time to get rid of this old boat that Dave bought at an auction that turned out to have dry rot in it. And then he proceeded to try to cut it up, but never got the whole boat cut up. So Travis was just chomping at the bit to get out there and get the boat cut up and get that out of there too. So that'll probably be the next project. But again, I just wanted to thank them for all their hard work. I mean, we, we are so thankful that they took the time to help us out. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the rebuild crew, they are hard workers. What they get done, in a short amount of time is incredible. So, you know, yeah, I, we could, yeah, we couldn't have done it without him. With Travis, uh, and I want to give a little credit to Travis and this whole process. And, and I don't, all of us kind of have seen Travis grow the past couple of years of his life. And um, if anybody knows him, it's, it's very odd recently that he's gotten hilarious. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's funnier than he's ever been. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say that that is because a lot of Travis's anger and resentments and his mean jokes and the things that he used to do because he was in, in, in a bad space, he's cleared his soil. He's gotten rid of a lot of his resentments. He doesn't have hatred in his heart. He's got love for people and he is hilarious now. And his jokes. So he is self-expressing and showing us who he really is. He's showing us every day his heart now. He's showing us. Oh, we lost you for a second. <laughs> or is it just me? No. Okay. He's frozen. Oh, okay. Okay. We lost you. <laughs> Rebuild. <laughs> Oh, shoot. That was so good for Travis, too. <laughs> Dang it. But yeah. the still picture is fantastic. You should put that on the website. Yeah. <laughs> still frozen. Still frozen. But yeah, so the Rebuild crew, um, you guys can go to the Facebook page to get the number to reach out. Uh, the Rebuild Crew LLC is the Facebook page. You can like the page and follow it. There's some really cool albums there, some jobs they've done. They've done fences. They've done um, floors. They've done, re they just had to log out and they'll be back in. They've done, um, I mean, so many things. My mind is like drawing a blank. I mean, they've done remodels. They've done dumping and hauling. Um, they have an excavator. Um, they, it's so impressive. They just started this in um, the end of May. They have been nonstop. And um, they are just really hard workers, very impressive. So the rebuild crew, Travis, Ryan, and Cam. Um, so yeah, you can, if you guys, if anybody out there needs some work done, you give them a call, they'll give you a free estimate. And thanks, uh, Sam Pallius for trusting them to do your work. So, and lots of you guys, and thank you for the comment you made on their page. That's really helpful. So any of you out there, I know the Moldens, you guys hired them too. Um, so if anybody, um, you know, has had a job done by the rebuild crew, um, if you could take the time to do a little um, testimonial or a, it's called a review on their uh, Facebook page, that'd be great. That's really helpful because that allows people to kind of see that they're legit. They're licensed and bonded now as well. 
Um, so that's official, um, licensed, bonded, insured. You know, in the beginning, that took time. So people have been waiting on that, but they are. So we're good to go there. So yeah, thanks, Pam. You're All welcome. right. So anybody have any questions for me before they get back on? <laughs> Let's go for it. Anything you want to say before they pop on that you won't ask or say in front of arts? Let's do it. <laughs> do something fun. <laughs> Angie, I don't know if it's the right place, but when I come visit, are we allowed to go do stuff or what's the, yes. we are? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes, you can you can take her off and and uh, go have some fun, have a blast. Uh, by the way, if there's anybody out there that uh, might have a an extra car um, that you're not using, we are looking for a car that we could uh, let Yvette, Yvette use for a weekend, uh, the weekend of the 18th. Um, and uh, if anybody does, you can reach out to me privately. Um, I put a I put a note already out to the ladies, and and we haven't had any luck on that yet, but. I'm still working on it, Yvette. Okay, thank <laughs> nice you. I appreciate, I appreciate it'd be nice to eliminate it. that. <laughs> and when I was just telling my daughter that today, I'm like, you know, it all adds up, and then that's more money we can pay for treatment. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I definitely, yeah. I was, I was bummed to hear you were staying at Lisa's house because I have an open house, but maybe next time. <laughs> uh, nice. I didn't know, and she had offered it up, so I thought that was, you know, nice to not have to pay for a hotel and stay yeah. with somebody too. So that was nice. Very, very nice. Very nice. Anyways, we're looking forward to having you. So that's coming in specifically, uh, strategically for the uh, barbecue uh, too. So she formed her vacation up here. Uh, her daughter, they're from California. So look forward to uh, introducing you to everybody in person and having you. Hi, Art, you're back. Well, darn it, yeah, you froze right when you were talking about how great Travis is. Oh, yeah. Well, don't worry. We went off camera and these guys proceeded to tell me how he's not. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah. They're a bunch of haters. There's, there's some things the university doesn't want you to know. Yeah. yeah. Travis is a good guy. Yeah. Listen, Travis is probably on, you know, and he's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was too. I was like, what? Travis deserves to hear this. He's one of my favorite people. As Travis well. is like, Nico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let him know. I'm going to let Travis know that right in his morning, right in his minute of glory, his old, his predecessor. I mean, he, Nico got that job from Travis. His protege. His protege. And then screwed him in the moment of glory. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. So we have like eight minutes left. So please, anybody out there that uh, we'd love to hear from you. New people got a question? You know, if you came on and you're new, this is an ongoing throw it up against the wall, see what six. We've talked about every topic you can possibly talk about. We've done talks. And guess what? We've contradicted ourselves over and over. And um, if there's contradiction, we really don't care. We might say one thing one day. It might show up differently another day. I don't care. I might change my mind. I might say that this seems like it's true now. And then next year, I'm going to say something totally different. People go, well, you didn't say that last year. I know that was last year. Ch changes the way i think changes i don't know that's why we can't write anything down that's why we've <laughs> that's never why been we able to write down a program Anyone wants ask a recipe. Me all the time how to describe it that's why we don't have anything in print people wanted me to write down my chili recipe no <laughs> no that's my self-expression don't make it i don't want you you taking my shit and making it that's me so then you write it down and you just leave shit out. <laughs> there, you know. Uh, oh, you didn't make speaking, it. Wasn't as oh. speaking of that. If anybody has any fun uh, recipes that you'd love to show off at an event, you you're welcome to bring it uh, for our, our barbecue, our Lake Day on the twenty first. If you've got something you like to put together and you love sharing it, bring some sides. We love that. You know, uh, Donald Trump wasn't typical. Whether you like him or whether you hate him, he was, you know, I remember when I remember my own, when Trump started tweeting, I was like, President of the United States can't tweet. That's terrible. I don't think he cared what I thought. 
<laughs> I really don't think Donald Trump even cared what I thought. So he did it anyways, and he kind of changed the environment of the world with that. His own form of self-expression. This is how I talk. What do you want? He ain't typical, that's for sure. Did you know that the Secret Service, they had a, when he was president, they had to stop saying, you know, if some emergency happened, they would no longer say, get down, get down. Instead, they would say, Donald Duck. <laughs> 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 see this isn't typical of a recovery meeting in a recovery meeting we're supposed to cry we're supposed to be depressed we're not supposed to laugh we're supposed to talk about our trauma even if we didn't have any and we have to make it up that we're traumatized because somebody told us that addiction has to do with trauma and even i'm sitting in a group thinking what the hell was my trauma oh i must not know what is it? Well, I'm an addict and they told me it's caused by trauma. So here I sit and I'm listening. So I'm nodding my head trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with me. By the way, maybe I just brushed up into a pile of heroin and I liked it. Maybe somebody turned me on to something that felt really good. Like somebody turned me on to chocolate cake and I ate a lot of that too. I don't have to dig deep and figure out why I'm a chocolate cake eater. It tastes good. And if you've ever done heroin or crack cocaine or meth, it feels good. good and when you walk that plane, it doesn't matter. Once you walk that higher plane and you feel what it's like to feel that good, you want to do it some more. And it's tough. And then we got to try to find out here on this planet what's going to kind of what's going to kind of fill that in. How am I going to live for the rest of my life without getting that kind of high? And I have to find these new kinds of high. And I'm telling you that self-expression is the way you do it. When you wake up with creativity and ideas and you can't get wait, you can't wait to get out of bed because you got an idea and you're driving to work extra fast that day because you can't wait to tell your boss or you're coaching a team and you can't wait to put your play into it or your coaching style and you can't wait to do that. And you can't wait to cook your food and you can't wait to be who you're going to be today. So you got to get out of bed. But if you're going to wake up and live an obligation and wake up with your complaints and wake up with your whiny blame and wake up with the fact of why you can't do something or your shame or your guilt or whatever the hell you're talking about, or you're worrying about somebody that did something to you 10 years ago, then you're not going to get there. You're just not going to get to the point where you wake up excited about life. You're just going to be sitting there saying, my mother shouldn't have done this. My father, how could my parents get divorced when I was eight? How can your parents get divorced when I, what, what person do you, can you stand? That's how they couldn't be together. How could my parents get divorced? Because people do, that's, most people get divorced. How could my neighbor punch me? What a, who cares? How could my friend sleep with my girlfriend? That's not even why you did drugs in the first place. Shut up. Yeah. You weren't sitting there at the dope man's house going, I'm going to go get these drugs because somebody did something to me. You weren't even thinking of that shit. You were sitting at the dope man going, this is going to feel so good. I can't wait. Oh, it's all bullshit. But we just listen and then we follow and we don't like it when anyone steps out of line. So I have a little bit of fear right now, even if I go against 12-step recovery and I have to say something. Oh, I hope they don't find out and hate me because I'm saying this. But they will. He doesn't believe in 12 steps. No, I just think there's other ways. That could work. But I think everybody's got to... I wouldn't want to march in line and do it that way. I want to do it my own way. Want to leave what's here? Add to the recovery community. Create your own thing. <laughs> Put something back. Leave something here. I was an addict of whatever, and it meant something. And here's why it meant something: because I left this afterwards, and this is what I learned. I didn't just sheeple my way through. I was an addict because all my friends got me loaded, and they all did it, so I did it, and. Then I got stuck in it, and then I went here, and I did what everybody else told me to do, and blah, 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 and now I work here and do what my boss tells me to do. Good luck being happy. Good luck with that. You guys are leaders.
you guys are powerful. You just forgot. <laughs> you just forgot what you need is that van with the name of your company on the side of it. What you need is that office with the name of your company on that office. You need your brand. Then you wake up excited. My brand. Self-expression, little different. We are unique. You know, in the big book, there's a line that says that we're, we're terminally unique. And what they meant by that was people always try to be unique as a drug addict. I didn't do this. I never got here. I didn't do this. I never stole from my family. I never... And people are trying to do that. That's gross. You can't be unique and really truly self-express when you're doing drugs. You can only be unique and self-express when you're not doing drugs. There's nothing different about the 10,500 people down there in Seattle right now. They're not self-expressing. They've all come together to be in misery. So we get sober and we see. Y'all want to matter here? Y'all want to be important? And it started out that good. I remember walking into the party with the beer and the, the briefcase full of different drugs. Everybody waiting on Art. Ah, he's here. He's here, guys. I'd always show up about 30 minutes late, make them wait, put the briefcase down on the table, open it up. What do you want? Uppers, downers. I was the center of attention. See a little new girl over in the corner. She asked her friend, who's that guy? It's, it's me, but <laughs> <laughs> I tried to express through drug use. It just didn't work. You end up in the closet alone looking at the people. <laughs> I mean, that's all there is to it. There are some that can do it. Like yeah. some of the most prolific ones. Yeah. Like, you know, Hunter Hendrix. S. Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. Or Hendrix, Cobain. You yeah. Know, Mitch Hedberg, Kennison, Andrew Dice. Never ends well. No. It's always cut too short. Bradley Noel. Like it's yeah. like, it's good for a while until it isn't. But these are some of the most creative people in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. And who would they have been without drugs? Mm -hmm. We don't even know. We don't even know what they could have left the world. So you look like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like they're sober now. And I feel like their music's a lot better than it was when they were getting loaded. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. I hope it, I hope, uh, I hope that, that gives you, you know, an idea of what, what this is about. Hope it gives you an idea of, you know, there was, there was it just in the last four weeks in this room, there was a hundred different topics and you don't have to believe in any of them. And you can grab a little bit of one of them and a little bit of another one, and you can do whatever you want with it. And there isn't any rules. <laughs> There is no 12 steps. There is no 12 rules. There's no four agreements. There's no quick step recipe. There's don't do that and don't do that. <laughs> and there's get rid of that. You want hatred in your heart? Don't do that. You want compassion? Then figure out why you're the same as this person. Stop making yourself out to be better because you're different. Stop. You did that too. The amount of people that are offended in this house because somebody stole from them when they've spent a lifetime stealing is incredible. And you can't look and have compassion from somebody who stole from you. I can't. Instead, people are running around. Who touched my stuff? I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> you touched everyone's shit. You stole your dad's shit, your mom's shit. You're stealing right now. So you better learn why you're the same as that person so you can get that hatred out. Find some compassion, clear up your mind, stop worrying about other people and stop worrying about your creation. What are you adding to the world? What are you leaving here? Gonna wanna get that figured out so that you matter. And in the grand scheme of things, maybe we don't, but at least make an effort. Anyways, um, thank you for all being on tonight. Um, I hope you get a little taste of what we're about. We can't send you the pamphlet. We don't have one. I can't send you the brochure. We don't have one. I can't send you to the website because we don't have one of those either. But here we are. And uh, we'll see you next week. And thank you all for coming. Good night. Good night. That was fun. Good night, everybody. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>